What's up guys? Sarge Party here, back with another video. So, before I get going, I want to just quickly apologize to you guys. I know it's been about a week and a half since I put out a video. I'm just waiting on some products to come in. The channel's growing, so hopefully pretty soon we're going to be doing maybe two videos a week and it'll just keep on going up from there. But I know it's been a little while, so I want to apologize to you guys. But let's get into it right now. So what we're going to be talking about, as you probably saw in the review, is the Limitless Sleeve Mod. All right, And this is by the Limitless Mod Company. It is a USA company, which you guys know I love. And this is the first single 18652 mod that I've ever bought, authentic-wise. And I say that because this old Sigeli Silver Dragon that I got for free... This thing is a piece of junk, and I have nothing against Sigeli. They make awesome box mods, all right? But this was a failure, all right? This thing is just, it's janky, it's wonky, it's telescopic, it does not hit hard. This Limitless Sleeve mod is my first real mod. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be diving down. I'm going to take the button apart. I'm going to kind of show you guys how it works. I'm going to give you guys some specs. And we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. Reason why they call this the limitless sleeve mod is because you can take this switch or this button off, take your battery out, pull that straight off, and there you have your sleeve. And I actually have the Tiffany blue one, and I know I'm gonna get some comments about it, but it just looks freaking sweet. And then I, I do have the brass body, all right, and this is what the body looks like. Okay, without the sleeve, this is what it looks like. You can actually buy different sleeves for this mod, okay? And I'll, I'll put a quick screenshot really quick so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So those are the different sleeves you can get. They have a ton of them, guys, all right? Different sites. Um... Some different brands have actually put out sleeves for this mod. I know Nine South Vapes has one. I'm not sure if it's out yet. Um, they have wooden ones. They have the Mod Men ones. But I'll definitely put a link in the description to all the sleeves and where you can get the body and everything of that nature. So before we dive down, I've gotten some people requesting that they want to see what builds I'm using. So I'm rocking the Dark Horse right now with this drip tip on here. And basically... I just have a down and dirty G-plat build on here. 10 wrap, 24 gauge G-plat. It's coming out at about 0.22. So, and what I'm dripping right now is I got this, the Upside by Schwartz. And uh, yeah, man, yogurt is the new custard. Let's go ahead and dive down. All right, guys, so here we are up and close with the Brass Limitless Sleeve Mod. As you can see, I have the button completely broken down. That's what we're going to be spending the most time looking at. There's not a whole lot of specs to go over, to be honest. Um, here's just an up-close look at the sleeve. You have your LMC, or Limitless Mod Company, logo at the bottom. It is an aluminum sleeve. Not a whole lot to look at there. It, this is kind of a glossy type finish. It's not slick, but it's definitely not powder coated. This is the body itself. All right. And at the top, you have um, actually very buttery smooth threads for the 510 connection. You also have your four venting holes that kind of have these concave type things. So in case of a catastrophic battery failure, whatever is released from that battery kind of has a pathway to go out. I do like that. I do like that that is at the top. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Besides that, just your basic tube. You have your threads for your button down there at the bottom. And this is solid brass. This is a 25 millimeter RDA. This brass body with the button is actually what you pay for. And obviously these sleeves are interchangeable and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is 
I am going to put this button back together and I'm going to kind of show you guys how it works. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So guys, basically we have five different parts of this button. We have the shaft right here that basically has the contact as well as the logo on the bottom of the switch or the button itself. You have your Delrin adapter that basically adapts to different battery sizes and trust me you will be using that. You also have this little aluminum ring and what this ring is for is to basically adjust the throw on the mech itself. This is basically adjusting how recessed the button is itself and I'll show you how that works here in a minute. Then you have the housing for the button itself. As you guys can see in here, you have four different points. You have a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. You have four different points. And this is called the four point rail system. And basically that means that once you put this part of the button in here, all right, It has to line up so perfectly and it's touching at four different points that way this can't turn and it has to go up straight for a smooth hit or a smooth throw and that's what the four point rail system is with this limitless mods actually the first thing you want to do <laughs> obviously is put your spring in okay then you line it back up and then what you do is you take this aluminum adapter and now this is kind of difficult and you want to be very very careful because you do not want to strip this what I like to do is I like to get it started with my fingers take something like this I take like a little needle nose type tool and I just start spinning it around all right I grab it and I just start spinning it and it is kind of finicky there's a tiny little hole in that aluminum piece but I don't have anything that's going to be that's going to be big enough to stick in that hole to adjust it so kind of get I'll check it and I'll say okay well that's just slightly recessed and that's about where I want it. I want it just slightly recessed. So that's about perfect. All right. And then finally, you just have your Delrin adapter to fit your battery. And this simply just pushes in and screws down like so. Get it adjusted to where you want. Put the button down for a second. I'm going to take my brass body here. I'm going to slip my sleeve on just like that. All right. Then I'm going to take my battery. I recommend using something like this for any mech mod. This is a sub ohm cell 2800 ma 35 amp cell 18650 battery. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in positive first. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this down. All right, screw this button in. Get it nice and tight. Now there's going to be a little battery rattle. But since this is a hybrid top cap, as I mentioned before, that's okay. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take your Addy and you're going to screw it right down in there. And I know for most of you this isn't any new news, but just trying to be thorough and explain how this works, all right? So now that I got it in there, there's a little bit of a gap, but that's when you would come down here and really adjust it and you would really work with it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but this is still going to hit, guys. And I can perfect it and get it without gaps at a later time but that's probably enough for now so let's just go ahead let's pop back up give her a vape 
I'll tell you where you can get it and we'll go over some more things from there. All right, so let's go back up. All right guys, so that's the Limitless Sleeve mod. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So for the good, for the pros, this mod hits hard. For a single 18652 mod, it hits very hard. It's got good conductivity. It looks and feels high end. It feels authentic. The finish on these sleeves is very nice. I love the brass for just the aesthetics of it. It feels nice in the hand. It's kind of one of those shorties, you know, just, just a cool looking feeling mod. The voltage drop on this is very, very low. I'm not going to do a quick test for you guys. It Just take my word. It has very good conductivity. The voltage drop is very low. I also like the fact that the venting holes are at the top. It just makes sense to me. At the top, on a hybrid top cap mod, this is the point where your battery is making direct connection with your atomizer. It only makes sense that the venting holes would be right up there with it. I like that. All right. Another thing I like about this mod is it is just highly customizable. There are hundreds, literally, of sleeves for this mod. You can get different buttons. You can get different springs. And again, this will all be in a link that I put in the description, but I like that. I like that later on, if I want to get a silver plated spring for this mod, I can get it. I can get a modman button, whatever I want. I like that. So let's talk about the cons real quick. All right, guys. So for the cons, I have some issues with the button. The first thing is I'm unscrewing this button, right? Well, it seems like every time I do that, this little Delrin piece, it moves, it, it changes, all right? So I, I'm constantly having to adjust this for the battery. Um, when you take it all apart, that little aluminum piece that I showed you guys that you adjust for um, recessing the button and changing how that is, it seems cheap. I don't like that it's, it's hard to adjust as you guys saw. Um, just some issues with that. It seems like stuff moves around on here. I know when I first got it, I didn't make any adjustments. And before I knew it, this button was sticking out. Okay, I, I don't like that. I, I just feel like that they could have done a little bit better job with the design on the button. And another thing I don't like, guys, is just that it's kind of finicky. There's a lot of little adjustments that you're doing. If you don't get this battery adjusted right, you're going to have a little gap down here and your sleeve is going to spin around and be loose. Um, there might be a gap up at the top. There's just a lot of tinkering. There's a lot of cleaning and wiping the brass. It just seems like there's a lot of extra work. And I don't have any problem with tinkering. When I'm making coils, I spend a lot of time, all right? A lot of time wicking. I spend a lot of time. I, I spend sometimes 15 to 20 minutes just wicking my builds. But when it comes down to the it's time to vape, and I just want to throw in a battery and vape. And so for me, I just don't like that there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made on a consistent basis. Like I said, every time I screw this switch off, I have to readjust it. It's just how it is. Another thing that is kind of a maybe a, a moot point with me is just the fact that I feel like this mod is slightly overpriced. So let me give you guys the prices, all right? For the aluminum body, it's $79.95, so about 80 bucks. For the brass body, it's $119.95. That's what I have right here. For the copper body, it's $155 just for the body that does not include the sleeve and the sleeves can range anywhere from about $20 to I've seen them up to $65 but they usually are about $25 hey, that's 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 somewhat overpriced I would never pay $155 for any authentic copper mech mod it's just not worth it to me it doesn't hit any harder than the brass it's just purely aesthetics and I think that's a little bit too much 120 is more like it, but I found this mod and the sleeve for 100 
and $19 shipped. All right, and so I would recommend trying to find this mod on sale, try to find a coupon that you can use, and maybe spend anywhere from 100 to 120. But I wouldn't spend over $120 for this mod. I don't think that it's quite worth it. So, if I lost this mech mod tomorrow, would I buy it again? Yeah, I would. But I probably wouldn't spend more than $120. I feel like that's my cutoff. I definitely wouldn't be buying the copper for 155. No way. But it does hit hard. All right. I'm not going to stunt. I'm not going to play any games. This thing does hit hard, especially for a single 18 650 mod. It hits hard. I don't even have to build that low. And I get a very satisfying vape with this mod. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It is somewhat overrated. This thing has a big following. The sleeve mod is very, very popular, but I think it's a little bit overhyped. What I will say is that it's a very solid mod. Once you get everything adjusted, once you get everything dialed in exactly how you want it, it does perform well. All right, it performs well and it's very well done. It's just got a good feel, it looks good, and I'm definitely happy that I bought this mod. You always have to keep in mind that you're not going to like every single little thing about a mod or an atomizer. There's going to be one or two things that's going to really bug you, and that's just how it goes. This mod's no exception, but overall, I would give this thing probably a B- minus if I had to put a letter grade on it. It's a pretty just solid mod, alright? So anyways, guys, I appreciate you hanging in there, watching the video. I'm glad that you did. Please drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I really appreciate the feedback. Again, guys, always, always, always be careful when you're using any kind of mod with a hybrid top cap. Always make sure that the atomizer that you're using has a protruding 510 pin. All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. All right, so anyways, guys, check out my social media information. Send me a question through email. Drop it in a comment. I try to respond to everybody, so I appreciate the support I've received so far. The videos are just going to keep coming, and I appreciate you guys for watching it. So as always, guys, much love. Peace out. Keep your cotton wet. Sarge party.